Hello everybody, welcome to the stream, welcome to the channel. I am Colin the Conqueror and today we are going to be exploring some Texas urban legends. Uh, I don't know if any of you are aware, but I am from Texas, uh, mostly lifelong Texan. I was born and raised here. Um, I moved away for a few years to Washington State, but I came back and I've been here ever since. Um, so yeah, and I have a big fascination with all things urban legends, scary legends, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I have three videos for you here today. They they range between 30 minutes each to um, like 10 minutes, maybe a little more. Um, they're all kind of top 5E style uh, ones. I might explore each of them, what I know about them myself uh, as we go along. I have not watched them, just so you all know. I have not watched them, so uh, let's uh, let's jump into it. This one is called Top 5 Unsettling Urban Legends from Texas, and I believe this one is Top 5 Scary Videos. That's the name of the channel. So go out and give them a like, maybe a subscribe. I don't know. They haven't. This is a year old. I think I followed this channel for a while. I don't know if they're still posting. I believe they're out of Canada, actually. Move this a little closer. See if I can maybe put myself more in, in view. There we go. This is one of the shorter ones. Now I'm hoping I can be heard. I'm going to do a quick sound check. Check, check, one, two. Now I'm hoping I can be heard. There we go. I can be heard. Hooray. Alrighty. Here we go. Hello out there, my delightful little ghouls and goblins, and welcome back to the fog. I'm Taylor, your casual crypt keeper, and boy howdy do I got something for you today. <laughs> they say everything's bigger in Texas. The steers, the hats, the burgers, and that includes the scares. It was hard narrowing this down to just five, I gotta be honest, because believe it or not, there are hmm. a lot of ghost stories are. out of the Lone Star State. Well, by the time we're done with this video, we're gonna rename it the Lone Scare State. Oh, that was, that was no. terrible. I'm no. so sorry. We'll do better than that. This is the top five unsettling urban legends out of Texas. Let me know down below if your state's got any great local folklore and which state we should hit up next. I just know West Virginia's got some great ghost stories. Now let's dive on in. Number five, the Screaming Bridge. Now our first Texan urban legend is a long told story based on a real tragedy. The accident on Screaming Bridge. Jeez, if that is not a name, that sounds more like it belongs on Hogwarts campus than it does somewhere right? in Texas. Over 50 years ago, several students were carpooling home after their football team defeated their rivals in a major victory. The students were riding high, celebrating, and were definitely not concerned with driving safely. I mean, come on, they just won the big game. Who wouldn't be celebrating? The bridge running through Arlington's River Legacy Park was wide enough to accommodate maybe one car at a time, if that. And the students were hollering and hooting and not even remotely looking at the road, drowning out the outside world and focused on themselves and this beautiful moment in time, not worrying about their future, their surroundings, the car speeding towards mm -hmm. them. Unfortunately, 
By the time anyone could realize what was happening, it was too late to stop it. The cars collided, erupting in a horrifying explosion, claiming the lives tragically of every single person involved in this crash. Now, this bridge can only be accessed by foot now. It was then given the name Screaming Bridge in honor of the horrible events that had happened up there. Now, local legends state that if you do journey up to Screaming Bridge and you stand looking right over at the river, you'll be able to see the apparitions of tombstones of all the victims. Goes a little further though. Visit up at midnight on the day of the crash, the anniversary. They say you're able to hear the screeching of the cars and the screaming of the victims, hence Screaming Bridge. Scary, scary stuff. I'm probably gonna take a little detour if I'm ever down in Arlington. I, I think I'm good. I'm sure there are plenty of non-haunted bridges for me to keep my feet on. And if you're looking for way more scary content, Top 5 Scary is the place to be. We've got urban legends from across the globe, horror movies, true tales, cryptids, ghosts, aliens, just about everything scary you could shake a stick at. So stay subscribed, but way more importantly, stay scared. And hey, stay watching this video, okay, before you check out the rest of the channel. We got way more cryptids and urban legends to go. Number four, the Chupacabra. The Chupacabra yeah. is one of my absolute favorite cryptids Yo, out there. I love the variants in sightings and legends because sometimes, depending on who's telling the story, the Chupacabra is described as being like an alien, reptilian, like mm -hmm. horrible little goblin guy that runs around on all fours and is from another planet and sucking all the goats. And then sometimes in some stories, the Chupacabra is just like a weird looking dog. I love it. Not all cryptids need complicated lore. Sometimes they're just a weird looking dog. Now, legends of the Chupacabra stemmed initially from Puerto Rico. Most cryptozoologists believe with stories dating back to the 1970s. Livestock was found going missing all around this one small town, Mocha, and were initially assumed to be the work of some cult, but later reported to be thought to be the cause of an animal, as all the livestock found had bite marks and their bodies bled dry. Now, the name Chupacabra literally translates to goat sucker, which is so funny that when you learn that, it is impossible to ever unlearn that. Now, this creature is a widespread phenomenon reported across the Southwest and Mexico. Mexico, but Texas of all places seems to be a real hotbed mm -hmm. for the creature. One very determined author, Ben Radford, who's a researcher at the Center for Skeptical Inquiry, and he even penned a book appropriately titled Tracking the Chupacabra, says that Texas is a chupacabra factory, one of the foremost places in the world associated with the beast. One of the more recent sightings and one of the more viral ones that was going around was a few years ago in Amarillo, uh, a zoo security yep. camera captured weird footage That's of a creature thumbnail. standing on its back legs that looks a whole lot like a chupacabra or Crash Bandicoot. You decide for yourself. <laughs> Number three, the black-eyed children. Our next oh entry details the paranormal sighting of a cryptid called the black-eyed children. Nailing down the first earliest sighting of black-eyed children ever is difficult since there are some conflicting reports, but most people tend to agree that the first widely like recognized instance of this was from a journalist in Texas in 1996 all the way mm. down in Abilene. Brian Bethel was a journalist working at the time, and he said he stopped in a parking lot near a movie theater to write a check. He heard a knocking on the door of his car and he looked up from his pen and paper and said, and I quote, I'm quoting him on this, he said he felt a soul racking fear looking out at a boy and his younger brother. The boy told Bethel that he and his younger brother both wanted to catch a movie, but they didn't have any money. Bethel was uncomfortable with this, but dismissed it as just having the jitters. The two kids told him that, hey, we're just kids, nothing to be scared of, and that they didn't have any weapons, which is, you what? know, that's a totally normal thing that kids would say to you in a parking lot all the time to calm you down. Bethel told the boys that the movie they wanted to see was already playing and they wouldn't be able to make it in time. And since this was in 1996, we could only speculate on what they wanted to see, but I'm pretty sure it was the Arnold Schwarzenegger classic jingle all the way. Anyway, Bethel said when he broke eye contact with the young little weirdos, he found himself completely swallowed by his own fear. The boy's eyes then became what? completely black, obsidian as midnight on a moonless night. Bethel's story kickstarted a number of sightings of these black-eyed children across Texas and even showing up in other states. No mm. one's got any idea just what they were or what they wanted, really. Like, what are they? What are their goals? Were they even human or just creatures sort of masquerading as humans? And did they really just want to see a movie and maybe he should have just driven them down to the Cineplex? 
We may never get answers on that one. Number two, the candy lady. Now our next story is a real sweet one. It details an old urban legend about a nightmarish figure named the candy lady. Does she know the candy man, do you reckon? I bet they would be a great fit for each other if anyone wants to set that blind date up. Anywho, the candy lady, despite the sweet nickname, was a ruthless criminal with little regard for her victims. Her real name was Clara Crane, but history remembers her as the candy lady since that's way scarier. Get ready for a humdinger of a ghost story. In 1895, she right, was accused of poisoning her husband by slipping him caramel candies that she had laced with something lethal. Now, a couple years before, this young couple had lost their child, causing Clara to become distraught. Clara blamed her husband for what had happened to the child, leading her to add a little extra sugar to his sweets. Oh, I'm, I'm making light of this. That's terrible. If she poisoned her husband, that's just terrible. I don't want to joke about that. Clara was deemed unfit for trial and was placed in the North Texas Lunatic Asylum, which, don't worry, thankfully received the much more pleasant name as Terrell State Hospital down the line. I can't believe that's ever what it was called before. Imagine getting sent to the North Texas Lunatic Asylum. Unfortunately, her stay at the North Texas Lunatic Asylum would not be the end of her legacy. I just wanted to say it again one more time. I'm sorry. Can you, can you blame me? In 1903, people started going missing around the town Clara lived in. Bizarrely, relatives of the victims would report finding candies and candy wrappers around their home. Sometimes there would even be threatening little notes on these candies. Locals started speaking again of Clara Crane, the woman who infamously poisoned her husband with dark candies years back. Now here's where it gets bone chilling. A nearby farmer found a bunch of teeth in his fields and then discovered the body of the town sheriff in his field without his chompers and forks in his eyes and candy in his pockets. <laughs> okay. now, no one knows what truly wow. became of Clara Crane. There's not really a lot of records for this thing, but she's become a great ghost story to locals who tell the tale of her luring people away with her sweet little treats and taking their teeth and eyes in return. Oh my God, that's giving me a toothache just talking Dang. about it. We have to move on from this one, otherwise I'm gonna have to book a dentist appointment soon. Ah, okay, moving on, moving on, moving on. <laughs> Number one, the donkey lady. I saved the best for last. Our last entry is the bizarre legend of the donkey this one lady. I've never now there's heard a of. few variations on the origin of the donkey lady, but the stories always end up the same horrible way. And we'll get there in just a minute. But let's take it all the way back to the start. And to go back to the start, we gotta go sometime in the mid 1800s. The story goes that there was a family that lived near Elm Creek, way down in San Antonio. They had a mm -hmm. modest farm property, a husband, a wife, and their children. One day, a $5 man from up north rode past their property and taunted the family for the donkey that they had. Not sure why you'd do that. He's clearly never seen a fistful of dollars. You never make fun of a man's mule. It's the fastest way to end up in a <laughs> coffin. Anyway, the mule didn't take too kindly to being laughed at and bit the man over his taunting. This man was enraged and beat the donkey within an inch of its life, at which point the mother of the family came out and started to pelt rocks at this strange traveling donkey hater. The man couldn't just leave well enough alone because as legend goes, later that night, he brought a posse back to come burn down the farmhouse and wow. blocked up all the exits to burn them inside, all over a donkey, allegedly. The farmhouse went up in flames. The only survivor, tragically, was the wife who initially had come to the donkey's defense. And she ran out of the home, her skin soaked in flame, her hands melted down to little stubs, her face deformed, skin sagging off the muscle, crispy and black, long, like a donkey's snout. She ran into the night and hurled herself into the Elm Creek, which is the last place anyone had ever seen her. Today, there's a bridge called Donkey Lady Bridge over Elm Creek, where locals claim that they've seen a creature with a donkey's face screaming at them from the window of their car. Legend has it that the spirit of the wife haunts this area and torments those who cross her bridge while grieving the unfortunate loss of her family. Well, my beloved mm -hmm. ghouls and goblins, that's about all she wrote. I had a real blast doing this video. Thanks for watching. Creep on, creeping on, and hey, hopefully I'll see you in the next one, okay? Take it easy now. Well, that was interesting. All right. Eh. I've never heard that one. That's, that's weird. I, and I usually keep up, like I said, on the urban legends of Texas, especially one as close to San Antonio to me. And I've been to San Antonio several times. On, like 
paranormal investigations, and I've never heard of Donkey Lady. So I'm a little I'm a little shocked about that one. Okay, so there was that one. That one was the one that I had the least amount of interest in whenever I found it. So I was like, all right, we'll go with this one first. Now let's see what these other two are. Um, all right, these are uh, most amazing top ten videos. We'll do this one. This one is top ten terrifying Texas urban legends you should pray before reading. We have the candy lady. Who loves candy? I love candy. Get me a dip and dab and a strawberry lace. Well, then we have to say the candy lady of Texas is enough to make me give up caramels for life, which is a shame because caramel is such a dream. So the candy lady is said to have been a woman called Clara Crane. She lived in Texas around the turn of the 20th century. She was said to have been married to an older man and the pair had a child called Marcella. Sadly, Marcella was killed in a freak accident and Clara blamed her husband and then went mad, reportedly killing him with poisoned caramel. She was mm -hmm. then taken to North Texas Lunatic Asylum but released a few years later. This is when candy started showing up on windowsills luring in kids. Later a number of kids across the state went missing and one farmer was said to have found rotten children's teeth in a caramel wrapper on his land. The urban legend goes that That's the candy lady will start by leaving a kid one. candy to win their trust. Then she'll abduct them the and stab them with a fork. I shouldn't laugh but forks are kind of like what the urban comedy legends do. They give right? A bunch of different From candy stories. candy lady to donkey lady at number eight. Okay, here's donkey, donkey lady, lady. Now I've heard it all. Apparently, ye old donkey lady haunts a bridge over Elm Creek in San Antonio, Texas. The origin story of the ghost dates back almost 200 years to the mid 1800s. When settlers were living on the banks of Elm Creek, a husband and wife had a small wooden farmhouse and were making a living with a small number of livestock. One day, one of their donkeys or mules was grazing in the area when a young man from the town came across it. This man was not a nice man, but he was a wealthy man. He was the son of an important okay, town leader. The young man teased the donkey and hit it with a stick, to which the donkey fairly responded by biting him. I'd bite someone if they hit me mm -hmm. with a stick too. Retaliating, yeah. the man started heavily beating the donkey. Hearing their mule being attacked, the couple emerged and told the man to get away, throwing rocks at him for hurting their valuable animal. The man had a bit of Prince Joffrey entitlement moment, and he screamed that his father would hear about this, and to be honest, hear about it he did he brought a bunch of friends to the farmhouse to torch the place when the husband intervened he was shot as were his sons the wife's dress caught fire and she helplessly watched her loved ones die as she was engulfed in flames she screamed running down the road she began to burn as she threw herself into the creek her body was never found but her wails are said to still be heard along the stretch of the road if a car stops for too long it is said that she appears screaming with her arms outstretched on the bridge some even report a body falling on the bonnet of the car, but when they stop, there's nothing there. Coming into number six, we have the Bonnet one lady of the Rio Frio. So the Frio River is a beautiful spot near Rio Frio in mm -hmm. Texas. On a summer's day, you may see picnickers hanging out by the water, enjoying the weather. But some I've say they've before. had a far yeah. spookier experience. Many people that visit the Frio River have reported a strange white mist hovering over the water. Some say it's a strange microclimate, but others cite the story of the Lady of Frio. The story goes that back in the 1900s, a young girl called Maria Juarez was the prettiest girl in the canyon. She was young and had an elder sister whom she loved deeply. Her sister had children with a man called Gregorio who unfortunately cared more about Maria than a sister-in-law. Maria helped raise her sister's children and dreamed that someday she would meet someone, marry them and have kids of her very own. She thought all of her dreams had come true when she met Anselmo, a dashing young man who seemed to return her affections. Sadly, this angered Gregorio who told Maria that he loved her and wanted to be with her. When she rebuffed him because of her sister and Anselmo, he shot her through the heart by the lake. Now her spirit is said to haunt the spot to this day. Adding a level of legitimacy to the story, there is an unmarked grave in a Frio cemetery said to belong to Maria, the white lady who died an unmarried virgin. Coming into number five, we have El Muerto. The El Muerto tale is truly terrifying. Back during the gold yeah, rush era, Muerto, people yes. thought that there was gold to be found in Texas. On top of that, the USA-Mexico border was hotly contested around this area, with an area of no man's land between the two countries. 
In this area, bandits were rife and Texas Rangers were around to keep them in check. One ranger, William Bigfoot Wallace, wanted to teach the bandits a lesson after one persistent criminal, known simply as Vidal, stole a bunch of Mustang horses. When he was in court, Bigfoot Wallace and his ranger friends chopped off Vidal's head, sat his body on a horse, attached his hands to the reins, and strung his head to the saddle. This was supposed to teach other would-be bandits a lesson not to mess with the Texas Rangers. Some poor sod then had to deal with finding the horse and its deceased cargo, which would be absolutely awful. Despite eventually being taken down from the horse, legend has it that Vidal rides on through the Rio Grande area today, and his ghost is dubbed as El Morto. Coming into number four, we have the Dancing Devil of El Cameroncito, a dancing Texas urban legend. I am so mm. down for this. Apparently, the Dancing Devil is local only to El Cameroncito, so ladies of other towns, no worries if a man is asking you to dance, you're probably safe. Ladies in Cameroncito, though, watch out. So basically, a legend has it that in the 1970s, a man in a dapper suit would ask beautiful ladies to dance with him. While they didn't find him beautiful, they felt compelled to dance. As he danced, women would be swept up. One day, a woman noticed the man she was dancing with had hooves for feet and that what? everyone near them was staring in horror. Realizing she was dancing with the devil, she ran away. The devil, however, remained. Now, I always keep my demons in my dancing shoes. Coming into number three, we have Goatman. Goatman, 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 Goatman. Fun to say, fun to talk about. There are a couple of legends surrounding the Goatman of Old Alton Bridge in Denton County. The bridge is locally dubbed Goatman's Bridge, and some say that is because there is a goat-like demon that haunts the nearby forest. But others turn to a more elaborate tale of a local goat farmer. Oscar Washburn was a black goat farmer who was known for being an honest businessman, and he was a well-liked member of the community. Unfortunately, a successful black man caught the attention of the KKK, who was said to have abducted him in August 1938. Reportedly, they tied a noose around his neck and threw him over the old Alton Bridge into the river below. When they went to bring up his body, they found that the noose was empty. Frustrated, the clan went to his house and slaughtered his wife and children. Washburn's body was never found, but a lot of paranormal enthusiasts will tell you that if you drive out over the bridge at night without your headlights on, the old goat man will be standing on the other side to greet you. Some also report being touched or grabbed by a spirit, and others say there are weird flashing lights in the nearby forest. Coming into number two, we have the ghost of Fort Phantom Hill. Fort Phantom is one of the most well-preserved historic sites in Texas, with original architecture dating back to the mid-1850s. Fort Phantom was built as a safe stop for immigrants headed to the Californian gold fields. The story behind the name of Phantom Hill seems to be twofold. On the one hand, the fort is said to look really high up on a plateau from afar, but when you get close, it looks level, so it disappears like a phantom. The other story is that one night while a sentry was keeping watch, he fired on a Native American who was on the hill. When he went to go and investigate, he didn't find a body. When the team at the whole fort went out to look for a band of natives, they couldn't find any evidence of them ever being nearby. This ghost on the hill is said to re-emerge every now and then, confusing those who watch from the garrison. Finally, coming into number one, we have one of the most well-known Texas urban legends ever. We have the Houston Batman. So first, I was like, I've heard Batman, of this, but only in, I'll guess, in passing. Get me there. But then I delved further yeah, into this legend and I realized that they don't mean like the superhero. No, no, no. no. The Houston Batman is also known as the Houston Horror and mm -hmm. is a winged creature that has regularly been sighted in Houston, Texas. Now this creature is a bit like Similar the Mothman. Similar to the Mothman, the yeah. Mothman prophecies and I don't like a big moth. The story of the winged menace dates back to 1953 when a woman and her neighbors were sitting on their porch in East 3rd Street, Houston. 23-year-old housewife Hilda Walker said she looked up over the lawn and saw the shadow of a huge moth. When she looked up, she saw something huge then fly into a pecan tree. Her and her neighbors thought that the monster was around six and a half feet tall, although they weren't totally sure what they'd seen. 14-year-old Judy Mayer, who was also sat on the porch, screamed in fear as she got a square-on look at the monster. He was described as a man, but with wings, huge, huge wings, and a weird, strange yellow haze around him. Mrs. Walker reported the incident to the police and spoke to local news outlets. The Batman slash Mothman may have been spotted once again by Houston Bel Air theater workers in the 1990s, and the legend lives on today. Some suspect a government cover-up is at play, as vigilantes seeking the Batman discovered that some years after the initial incident, Mrs. Walker's neighborhood was raised to make way for a new part of the interstate. All right, coming in at number yeah, 10, we sense. have Lechuza. Ooh, 
Ooh, I love a good owl, but this one yep. is not your average mouse catcher. Lechuza is a shape-shifting witch who flies through the night hunting for prey. Mm -hmm. While in flight, she may look like an owl. When a Lechuza is stopped, they have bird bodies and human faces, so basically a lot like a harpy. The women seem to be hybrid monsters, as in their human lives they were said to have sold their soul to the devil, who gave them intense magical powers in exchange for their souls. How do you know you're in the presence of a Lechuza? Well, they'll let you know by a series of whistling and baby noises. Those who try and investigate what the noises are will likely become dinner for the owly she-witches. Not great. Coming in at number nine, we have the Chubacabra. Ah, the legend of the Chubacabra. This one isn't constricted to Texas alone. The Chubacabra story first sprang up in Puerto Rico. It is said to be a blood-sucking monster from the deep that attacks animals and drinks the blood of livestock, especially goats, which is why the creature's name translates to goat sucker in Spanish. Anyway, in Texas, reports of the chupacabra were rife in the year 2007 mm -hmm. when a woman named Phyllis Canyon reported seeing one of the blood sucking monsters at her ranch in South just Texas. A hairless coyote. She also reportedly found a number of chickens with their throats torn open. This sparked a whole chupacabra panic, and the legend of the beast was firmly consolidated in the Lone Star State law. Coming into number eight, oh, we have the Chinese Cemetery. There is a strange urban legend surrounding surrounding a seven foot tall ghost and her lover at the Lona China Cemetery in Texas. This isn't just your classic ghost haunting in a graveyard, except actually I guess it is, only there's a freakishly tall ghost. Mm -hmm. mm. The story goes that a man wanted to run away with his lover of Chinese descent, but he was forbade by his great grandfather who owned the cemetery. The issue here was an issue of race. The man was Anglo-Hispanic, but his grandee didn't want him mixing. I bet that old racist isn't pleased that the cemetery is now called the Chinese Cemetery. Hey. <laughs> anyway, both the ghost of the tall woman and the man are said to roam the cemetery at night looking for one another, but sadly, they never quite meet, which is depressing. Apparently the female has been known to reach out and touch you, thinking that you might be the lost love. Since shivers up my spine. Ooh. Coming in at number seven, we have the legend of Midget Mansion. Not the most politically correct name, but it seems that Midget Mansion is the name this urban legend is best known by in San Antonio. It seems that the house in question is a mansion with low hanging fixtures and ceilings custom built for a family of small people. A husband and a wife and their normal sized children took up residence in this home. The father was said to be a respected businessman in the 1920s and was well liked in the community who found him to be a novel addition. It seems sadly the man went mad one day and murdered his entire family. What with the murders and the odd size of the home, nobody really wanted to buy it so it fell into disrepair. It seems that the ghostly sounds emanating from the building and strange shadows lurked for many many years. A lot of people who went to the abandoned house felt a malicious presence. From my research, it seems that the old house has finally been pulled down in favor of condos. However, the ghostly mm. presence, the trauma of the family left behind, is apparently still rife in folklore. Coming into number six, we have El Kukui. <laughs> Am I saying <laughs> this right, Texas? Let yes, me know, because I'm are. just a humble British gal who has no idea, really. So these urban legends come around so much. I honestly feel like mm -hmm. in every country and within that, a lot of provinces and states have She's their saying own as version. close as she can. El Kukui is a Texan yeah. bogeyman, but worse. Apparently. Yeah. Now, the legend describes the beast as male, small, humanoid with glowing mm -hmm. red eyes. Al Kukui hides in closets and under beds and comes for naughty children in the night. While this does seem like your classic boogeyman stuff, it seems that there have been some reported sightings of El Kukui over the years. Now, this leads me to think that actually, maybe there is something more to this urban legend after all. Coming into number three, we have Demon's Road. It just isn't an urban legend video without a spooky haunted road. Is it? No. It's not. In Huntsville, Texas, there is a stretch of road called Bowden Road, although locals will tell you that it's called Demon's Road. Why? More because of the demonic things that have reportedly happened along it. Oh, and there's a cemetery at the end of the road, which doesn't really help matters. Uh. A whole bunch of Huntsville residents have had weird experiences along the road or seen strange things, but this isn't just your average haunted road. It seems that oftentimes specters will follow people home. One popular story associated 
associated with Demons Road is that a woman was visiting the cemetery at the end of the road when she saw a man lurking. Now, the man was acting a bit weirdly, he was pacing up and down, but she didn't pay him much attention. After that, as she was journeying home, she thought she saw the same man walking on the road, but once again, she just ignored it. When she got home, however, she thought she saw the same man staring at her from her bathroom mirror while she was in the shower. She screamed, he disappeared, and she never saw him again. Creepy. Number eight, theater center. This would make horror movies so much better. I imagine you get to watch a movie about ghosts in a place that's actually haunted by ghosts. Amazing. The theater center is apparently haunted by the ghost of an usher. The usher was killed in the theater by a jealous boyfriend when he was stabbed. On the bright side, this would mean you would get free movies for eternity. I mean, there's way worse places you could die. Imagine if you died in a paint store and then you had to haunt this place for the rest of time. The most exciting part of your day would be when they bring in the new fall colors. Wow, there's 11 shades of brown. Exciting. Number seven, <laughs> Civil War Ghost. I guess the benefits of being a ghost after a war is you get to see how everything happened. You're either like, I can't believe what the world has come to, or you're like, man, I was really the bad guy this whole time. Over on the Thompson Island Bridge in San Marcos, Texas, a Civil War ghost has taken post and he will never leave. The backstory on this ghoulie is he pops up whenever a war is happening. So for America, that means this guy's working overtime. Also, it's saying yeah. he can't leave because he made a promise to his brother that he'll make it home alive no matter what. I think it's time this guy took an L and just moved on to the afterlife. Number five, Marfa Lights. We're jetting over to the I've little town that of Marfa, times. Texas. I love in Marfa. this little old country one of my town, favorite towns. there's some pretty weird happenings appearing right in the sky. The Marfa lights are these balls of light that appear out of nowhere. Like someone mm -hmm. floating in midair is lighting off an M80. There has been so much speculation on what it could be. Some people think it's spirits floating around doing a little dance for the people watching. Just because you're dead doesn't mean you don't want attention. Other people think that it could be aliens. They think that they travel between this spot in Marfa and wherever these aliens have come from. They can use this spot to take samples of the earth, like a little school trip. But scientists have said that it's just balls of gas lighting up in the air. Boring scientists always ruining our fun. But hey, there's still hope that they're just trying to cover up some actual alien activity. Huh. Number two, Bigfoot. Yes, I know Bigfoot was originally spotted in North Carolina, but there have been many sightings of the possible missing link in the Lone Star State. I mean, if you're a Bigfoot, I can't imagine you believe in borders. You just kind of go anywhere you please whenever you want and try to not get shot and make sure you're always out of focus. Although I do <laughs> think that Texas would be one of the worst places for a Bigfoot to travel. They're covered in hair and Texas is almost always hot. There's mm -hmm. cowboys and trackers all over the place who would probably love to hunt you down and there's so many guns. I would definitely put Bigfoot on the list of things that are totally fine to shoot on sight. But the old ape man is really popular in Texas. There's even a group in Beeville called the Bee County Bigfoot Research Group that is dedicated to finding out the truth about Bigfoot. I wonder if they get paid for that if Did they I just do it out of the goodness of their hearts. Around At here. number eight we okay. have the Sons of Herman Hall. This old hall is a nice place to have a low-key wedding or throw one of those hall parties. Are those still a thing? They were cool when I was in high school. I'm not cool anymore. But if you choose to have any sort of event at this hall, you're going to have plenty of unexpected guests. There have been tons of apparitions that have shown up while people are still partying in the building. People have seen couples dancing together, kids playing, and all sorts of scary ghostly things. But the ghosts always seem like they're having a great time. Many of the ghosts are dressed in their Sunday best, like they're heading to a big event. If you're going to be a ghost crashing a wedding, you can at least dress like you're supposed to be there. That's a very <laughs> nice thing for them to do. I wonder who would be the last one dancing. It would be pretty hard to out Samba someone who doesn't have a heartbeat. And number seven, we have the Dolphus Hotel. You know, I think if a big expensive hotel has a ghost inside it, it almost makes it more fancy. You know, I think if a big expensive hotel has a ghost inside it, it's almost more fancy. The owners are like, yeah, this hotel is so nice, people want to spend eternity here. If you agree with this idea, then the Adolphus Hotel must be one of the fanciest hotels in all of America because it is super haunted. The most famous ghost is that of a woman in white, the ghost of a bride who never made it to the altar. Her ghost has been seen all over the hotel but mainly on the 19th floor. She tends to stick to number 19 Where's because the that's the floor where she took her own life on the day of her wedding. Mm. She hung herself in one of the rooms. Not only can you see the well-dressed ghost floating around, but you can also hear her. Some people have reported the sounds of a crying woman from empty rooms. On top of the deceased bride-to-be, there are that some other like ghosts Driscoll. who will walk around the hotel whispering in people's ears and even one that plays the piano in the ballroom. At number six, mm. we have Flagpole Hill. 
if you want to visit this place, you better have car insurance because your car is going to get bashed up. Flagpole Hill seems like a place where you could just display your patriotism and then go home. But what? that's not the case. There's a bunch of ghosts there who want to ruin your expression of loyalty because the punk phantoms will start throwing rocks at your car. People have reported <laughs> rocks being thrown at their car when no one is standing there. Like, dude, I just got this Sunfire. Like, are you kidding me? You know what this baby means to me? It's crimson red. Crimson red Sunfire. So maybe if you go to Dallas, you can show your American pride by going to the Cowboys game and skip the jerk offs who throw stones at your car. Some people think that the ghost comes from a nearby house where a man committed suicide. At number five, hmm. we have the Granddad Theater, an old closed down Granada. theater. Granada. Of course, this place has some ghosts kicking around inside it. There have been loads of reports coming from this place. The most famous is about how the door to the projector room opens and closes on its own. It's not like that haunted door from the Los Angeles urban legends list that would crush people to death. That's probably my favorite haunted door of all time. Mm -hmm. But this one is still pretty creepy. Now, where have these ghosts come from? Well, apparently the whole place was built on an Indian burial ground, which seems like an old was. trope. I don't even know if I believe this one, but I'm here to bring you guys what I have learned. So it's up to you to decide whether or not you believe it. At number four, we have Mary of the Comb Creek Trail. What are the top three things that make ghosts? Brides who die on their wedding day, people who fall victim to some sort of horrible curse or accident, and of course, children. I would say child ghosts are some of the most creepy. I think their little hands are all still sticky in the afterlife. Well, the sticky handed ghost of a young girl named Mary haunts the Comb Creek Trail. If you're walking or driving down the trail, you might see her ghost standing by watching you as you pass. There have been a few photos of the spirit and it seems like she's not alone. In most of the photographic evidence, you can see what looks like to be some sort of entity standing behind her. Could this other phantom be the reason that Mary went missing? Maybe this monster grabbed her and took her to the other side. Or maybe she was kidnapped and her kidnapper died alongside her. Who knows? And for the number one spot, we have the LBJ house. So we've had dead brides, hotels with ghosts, presidents possibly now? cheating husbands, monsters, and ladies of the lake. Let's get into the real nitty gritty of Dallas. The LBJ house is a long standing home that everyone refuses to live in. Why? Well, there's a bunch of ghosts in there, you dingus. And now how did all those ghosts get in there? Well, I'm gonna tell you that. Slow down, alley cat. Because a man came in and murdered his whole family with a butcher knife and then hung himself. Whoa, you could say. Why? Why is it named after LBJ Boy, then? That Come on, you better quickly. tell me. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now the place has an evil attached to it. I mean, for good reason. A dude butchered his whole family in cold blood. If you do something like that, it doesn't tend to bring in the good vibes. Now, if you go into the house, you can see blood splashes appear on the walls and an overall feeling of doom in your heart. That sounds like a bad time. Hmm. Okay, all right. Well, here comes our last video of the day. Uh, this one is... Is it this one? Yes, it is this one. The Devil's Hideout. Well, it's this, this distinctly says it right there. But this is called The Top 10 Terrifying Places in Texas That Are Pure Evil. <clears throat> <coughs> Excuse me. This one seems to top many lists for the most ghostly activity. Mo While there are many reportedly haunted hotels in Texas, this one seems to top. I've been many in there lists for numerous the times. I used to give activity. tours in there. Most of this seems. To I've had a lot of experiences in that, of in that hotel. Five two five. In the 1880s, there was a young couple that was having their wedding at the hotel, or at least that was the plan. The groom got cold feet and left the bride at the altar. Now heartbroken, she ran upstairs to their suite, room 525, and took her own life. And it's said she still walks the halls in her long white gown. But that isn't the end of the story. Because in 1991, another bride was spurned at the altar. And after going on a shopping spree with the groom's stolen credit card, she too returned to room 525 and took her own life. Since then, guests have seen yeah, her that's carrying Monica. a pistol and walking into the room that's all the, without that was ever my opening supervisor. the door. So don't stay her. in room 525 <laughs> or you may never check out. There's also an eerie painting that's said to be inhabited by the spirit of a young girl, the daughter of mm -hmm. a senator. 
whose expression seems to change on its own. People who view the painting have said that they feel like they were floating off of the ground, though they remained on the floor. They also say that their equilibrium and balance was off for a few hours after looking at her. Number 9, USS Lexington, Corpus Christi. Now before I tell you about this spooky ship, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can catch all of our amazing videos. As a naval vessel that saw actual battle, there have been multiple lives that were lost on board, including that of an engine room I don't remember, I think my dad and I drove by that once. Night, we almost went on it. End. The crew I don't of think the we ever actually did. The reported flickering lights and doors slamming on their own, which given that this is a very well-maintained historical site, You'd think that they would have found the cause by now. Maybe it's just the ghosts of sailors lost to time. Coming in at number eight, we have the Marfa lights in, you guessed it, mm -hmm. the town of Marfa. While there is so much beauty in the area and plenty of non-spooky reasons to visit, yep. the main tourist attraction to this quaint little town are floating, sourceless lights that seem to change color and even move in the night sky. Many visitors make the journey at all times of year to see the lights, and there's even a yearly festival made in their honor. Reported since 1883 by people of all ages and professions, no one knows what these floating orbs are. They appear at random, but usually in the same area of the sky, and since there's so much open space and low light pollution, it's mm -hmm. perfect for stargazing. Well, but there's seen a lot of lights orbs, now, because some say that these silly lights people are UFOs, decided they wanted to put some up lights. say spirits, and others think that they're just headlights. All that I know is that if I see a mysterious floating orb, I'm going the other way. Number seven. Woman Hollering Creek, San Antonio. Said to be the home of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman, La this Llorona. creepy creek leaves anyone who visits with a sense of dread. As the story goes, La Llorona was a woman who was distraught that her once doting, mm -hmm. affectionate husband left her for another woman. And after confronting him and leaving the confrontation with cuts and bruises, she waded into the water, dressed in her best clothes, and drowned herself in the creek right after doing the same to the rest of her family. Her chilling screams for her children can be heard all the way from the highway, giving her and the creek its very apt name. Many people have felt themselves being drawn towards the water by ghostly voices, and some have even been tugged towards the bank of the creek. Perhaps it's La Llorona looking for her next victim. The screams heard and feelings of being pulled into the water have mostly been reported by younger people, making this all the more terrifying, given what La Llorona did. Number six, El Paso High School. Now, when you're thinking of haunted places, a school isn't exactly the first place that comes to mind, mm. but this one has quite a story. In 1985, the graduating class received their yearbooks, and when basking in the nostalgia of their group photo, they noticed something odd. A woman who no one could identify was in the picture with them. Now, obviously, that would be quite concerning. I know mm -hmm. I'd be freaked out if there was someone I'd never seen before standing next to me in a picture. The blurry apparition still has not been identified to this day, but mm. some think it's a student who fell from a window years before who never got to graduate. I say give her the diploma. She's already in the yearbook. Sticking in El Paso, in our number five spot is the Plaza Theater Performing Arts Center. As someone who loves the theater, I try to see as many shows as I can, but I think I'll skip visiting this theater, no matter how good the production is. Built in 1930 as a movie house, demolished for a parking lot in the late 80s, and rebuilt as a live theater space, this building has seen many, many changes, but some things have stayed constant throughout its history. Many workers of the building have reported seeing a man in one of the box seats, in a tuxedo, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> one crew member recalls seeing him after turning on the stage lights, sitting alone in the box, as though he'd been there for hours already before the lights came on. And when she saw the smoking man, he turned to her and said, we all have our time to die and then threw himself headfirst over the balcony, what? vanishing before he could hit the ground. A former vice That's president freaky. of the theater also recalls seeing a ghostly girl bouncing a ball in the aisles of the theater and always staring. He also noticed that there was a rag doll that seemed to appear and disappear on its own, moving to locations that it couldn't have without someone's help. Even locked doors didn't seem to stop it from appearing in the projection booth. Number four, Yorktown Memorial Hospital. Established in 1951, this abandoned hospital has been named one of the most haunted places in America. And since over 2,000 patients are said to have died within its walls before it Dang. shuttered its doors in 1992, I can see why. Reports of apparitions of people in hospital gowns running through the corridors or hiding in rooms are numerous, along with moving wheelchairs, disembodied voices, and footsteps. 
but there are some who have even more chilling stories. While exploring the halls and rooms that have remained largely untouched since its closure, some ghost hunters have been touched, had their clothes tugged on, or even pushed to the ground while being given a ghostly warning. Some of the spirits are believed to be that of patients who had illegal medical experiments performed on them and lost their lives in the process, making for a very vengeful ghost. Number three, the Screaming Bridge in Arlington. On the night of February 4th, 1961, six from the local high school were taking a drive after seeing a movie earlier in the evening. While driving down Bedford Road toward the rail crossing bridge, which had mysteriously been burned down a few years previous, only rebuilt earlier that year, they were startled by another car reversing and honking its horn wildly. This caused the driver to speed up out of fear and not realizing that the bridge was out, the car careened over the edge and crashed into the other side of the ravine. Unfortunately, three of them lost their lives that night and their screams of terror can still be heard by anyone traveling the renamed Greenbelt Road. The saddest part of this story is that the car that startled them was being driven by a man who had just barely avoided going over the edge of the broken bridge himself, and he was reversing and honking to warn them of the danger ahead. The entire area, now known as Death Crossing, is now blocked off and no traffic travels through. At number hmm. two on our list, That's we have different from the last one we in heard. Houston. Yep. This historic bar, okay. built originally as a bakery in 1860, has been serving patrons for decades. But many come not only for the drinks, but for a paranormal experience. Bartenders and visitors alike have seen apparitions of a hulking man walking upstairs and hearing his giant footsteps pacing the floor. No one knows who this may be, but some say he died there from some nefarious means. The former manager of the bar can also be seen staring out of the top floor window, looking over his patrons and ensuring they're having a good time. And he seems a bit more friendly. <laughs> However, there are some that report the sounds of a body being dragged across the floor above, but when the sound is followed, nothing's there. Makes you wonder what happened upstairs. And since it's one of the oldest buildings in the city that's been in continuous use, it's become a tourist hotspot and a historical site. Personally, I won't be stopping in for a drink anytime soon, no matter how good the cocktails are. Mm -hmm. And finally, number one, the Alamo. While students are taught to remember the Alamo, they don't really teach about all of the spirits who can never forget. Mm -hmm. In the infamous battle, thousands of soldiers lost their lives, and many were dumped into mass graves, and I'll see if others I can left find to it, rot but I caught a very sun. bizarre so it makes EVP sense that at you the have Alamo. Some pissed off ghosts wandering the ground. It was in there have Spanish. been countless reports of soldier apparitions walking with weapons in hand, taking their usual patrol, and even full platoons screaming and charging into battle. Even in the afterlife, they couldn't get away from war, and so they continue to fight their invisible enemy. There are also accounts of a small blonde-haired boy hiding in multiple places where the gift shop now stands, so make sure to pick up your haunted keychains. While the buildings are beautiful to look at and the area is interesting to explore, the history can leave one with a haunting feeling. Mm -hmm. And with all those spirits around, I'd be careful touring here, especially at night. 10 Bragg Road, Saratoga. The big thicket in southeast Texas is a dense forested area that runs along the Alabama border, and there are very few roads that cut through it. One of the most infamous is Bragg Road. In 1904, the road was built as a rail line to connect the now abandoned town of Bragg to the now thriving Saratoga. While the rails have long since been torn up, some ghostly reminders of the past still remain. When you drive down this lonely eight mile long dirt road at night, you, like thousands of others before you, are sure to see what are known as the ghost lights, basketball-sized orbs of light that float and dance through the air, even changing in color according to some. There are a few mm. stories on what these lights actually are. Uh, the most popular story is that a tragedy occurred on a midnight train run. The conductor, sleep deprived from a long journey through the state, needed some fresh air to wake himself up. He stuck his head out the window, and in a freak accident, he was decapitated by a tree. And now his spirit is wandering the road, searching for his lost head. The other prevailing theory is that the light is a ghostly lantern belonging to a groom whose bride left him at the altar. He went searching for her in the forest at night, but has still never found her to this day. Number nine, Baker Hotel, Mineral Wells. Mineral Wells is known for its, you guessed they're, it, mineral rich water. They're in renovating the 1880s, that right now. people would travel from all over Texas to drink some, and it supposedly had healing powers and could cure almost any ailment. And with that kind of tourist attraction, you need somewhere for all of these folks to stay. And so in 1929, 
the Baker Hotel was opened. With 14 floors and 450 rooms, it was the biggest hotel for miles, and it used the mineral water as a draw for all sorts of people. To this day, towns. workers and what visitors alike miles. find small towns. things missing from their pockets or bags while touring the grounds, and workers have later found them on the floor in the Baker Suite, the room where the owner lived and died. They also report the smell of cigar smoke in the air, another habit of Mr. Baker, further proving his presence. But there are also some less friendly spirits here, notably that of the chopped bellhop, who lost his life in a freak elevator accident that saw his top half removed from the oh, bottom half of his no. body. He's seen floating sans legs and screaming to be made whole again. Workers recommend you stay away, lest you meet the same fate. Known for its programs in engineering, technology, and agriculture, Texas A&M is one of the most highly regarded university in the state. But the engineering building is home to not only future engineers, but the spirit of a former worker. In 1959, Roy Sims was the foreman for the meat locker in what was then the Animal Industries building. He was showing his assistant some tips on butchering bacon, and when the assistant stepped out to get them both some coffee, the knife slipped and Sims accidentally sliced his leg, severing his femoral artery in the process. The assistant returned to see Roy bleeding out on the floor and called an ambulance, but it was too late and he passed away. Students and faculty alike report strange happenings in the building to this day. Noises and crashes, cool breezes when all the windows and doors are shut, and even objects moving or being out of place. And many attribute this to the ghost of Roy Sims just trying to get back to work. Number seven, Lake Highlands High School, Dallas. Imagine being back in high school, and during a rehearsal for the school play, the lights suddenly go out, and when they come back on, costumes have moved, props have crashed to the floor, and you see a ghostly apparition rise back up to the rafters. <laughs> this is exactly what some students and faculty have reported at the Dallas High School. Reportedly, the ghost is that of a former student, Elizabeth, who took her own life jumping from the roof of the auditorium. While many attribute the cold spots and strange noises to the wind, there is no denying that there was a student named Elizabeth who attended the school around the same time the urban legend takes place and passed away, though the cause remains unclear. Number six on our list, the Ritz Theater in Corpus Christi. While there are no accounts of specific yeah. deaths associated with what was once South Texas's most beautiful theater, there are certainly enough ghostly happenings to make anyone's skin crawl. Paranormal investigators have reported that while walking through the now crumbling building, you can feel cold spots, hear voices, and see orbs floating through the air, some of which they've actually been able to catch on camera. Perhaps these are spirits who never managed to move on, or maybe they're happy right where they are, enjoying a pleasant night out at the theater in the afterlife. We won't know until somebody asks. Number five, Jefferson Hotel, Jefferson. Originally built in 1851 as a cotton warehouse, the Jefferson Hotel has had haunting stories for decades. To this day, workers who were once skeptical of spirits have been converted to believers after dishes have gone flying, phantom footsteps were heard, and the front switchboard lit up as though the rooms were talking to each other, even when the hotel was closed to guests. Many attribute this to the ghost of Elizabeth, common ghost name, I guess, who took her own life in the hotel after her soon-to-be husband sent a note that he would not be coming to the wedding. This has been very verified by newspapers to have happened in the 1870s, and there have been sightings of a woman in white roaming the halls of the hotel ever since. Number four. Hendley Row, Galveston. One of the oldest still operating commercial buildings in the city, Hendley Row has seen many occupants throughout its time. Most notably, it was a watchtower during the American Civil War. Some have reported a soldier on the roof of the building at night watching out for Union Army members. There are also many spirits who appear soaked and wet from the 1900 storm that they and 12,000 others lost their lives in. However, my favorite story from this building is actually more recent. The manager of the market was gifted a photo of Dr. Wilbur, a man who had lived and died in the buildings many, many years before. And they decided to hang it in the market as a historical artifact. When Hurricane Ike hit the city in 2008 and left the building in 10 feet of water, damaging so much of the property, the picture remained unharmed despite falling in the water. During their annual Day of the Dead celebration, the photo is included on the altar, along with many other objects and candles. With a three-person rotation to ensure it's done, the candles are extinguished at night. Yet every year, the candles are mysteriously already burning the next morning. Number three, Haunted Train Tracks, San Antonio. I've on a dark that, night yeah. in 1936, at the rail crossing on Chain Road, just outside video. of San Antonio, a tragedy yeah. occurred which would rock the state to its core. Mm -hmm. An after hours event at the local elementary school had many students staying late that night, and the school bus service was diverted till later in the evening. When it was time to go, students loaded up and headed home. Unfortunately for some, this would be their last ride. The bus had been 
been working better than ever all evening, the bus driver noted, and suddenly it stalled out on the rail tracks. The driver tried and tried to restart the vehicle, but it was no use. Then suddenly a train appeared. Its lamp must have been out, and it was too late to move the bus, even if it was working. The driver began to carry students off the bus as fast as he could, but then the bus was hit by the train side on, and the driver was thrown from the window. Ten students survived, but many others didn't. After recovering from his injuries and leaving the hospital weeks later, the bus driver got in his car and returned to the rail crossing that night. Haunted by grief, he drove his car onto the tracks, turned it off, and hurled his keys into the night, determined to take his own life. And when he saw the train charging down the tracks, he suddenly felt the car rolling forward, all the way off the tracks and out of harm's way. When he inspected his car, he saw multiple sets of small handprints on the back perhaps those of the students, not wishing for his life to be lost in the same way theirs had. Number two, Hotel Galvez, Galveston. After the devastating hurricane in 1900 that left many dead and much of the town destroyed, Galveston decided to rebuild. And with that came the Hotel Galvez. Many spirits are said to be lurking the grounds, even to this day, but the most infamous of them all is Audra. In 1952, she was staying in room 501, while her fiance was out at sea working on a cargo vessel. When news came from the company that their ship had sunk and all hands on board were lost, Audra decided to end her life in the hotel room that night. But a few days later, her betrothed returned to the hotel. Reports had been wrong and he had survived the shipwreck and elated to see his fiance, he threw open the doors to room 501 and saw her body. Distraught, he then took his own life, laying next to her on the bed. And finally, we reach your number one most suggested haunted place in Texas, Goatman's, Goatman's Bridge. bridge. This yeah. bridge in Denton once led to the homestead of a farmer, the Goatman who was renowned for the quality of his farm's milk, cheeses, and meat. The former owner of the land never saw any such success while he operated the farm, and in a booze-fueled fit of jealousy, he attacked the farmer put a rope around his neck and threw him from the side of the bridge. He then returned to the homestead and burned it to the ground, taking the lives of the family and the livestock. When he returned to the bridge to check on his gruesome handiwork, he looked below only to see an empty noose. He then heard three loud metal clangs, like someone was knocking on the bridge. And then suddenly behind him, a large ghostly man with a goat for a head appeared, put a noose around his neck and threw him over the side of the bridge, taking revenge for himself and his family. Now they say that if you visit the old Alton Bridge at night and knock three times, you too will see the goat man. But be warned, he does not like to be disturbed. Number 10. White Rock Lake Park, Dallas. In 1943, the story of the ghost of White Rock was published in a Texas folklore publication, Backwoods to Border. The story goes that there was a young couple who was looking for somewhere they could be alone. They drove down a deserted road and parked on the shore of the lake. When they turned their headlights on, they saw someone walking towards them. A woman dressed in a white sheer dress who was soaking wet was coming closer and closer to their car. Concerned, they asked the woman if she was alright, and the woman then spoke and said, I'm sorry to intrude and I would not under any other circumstances, but I must find a way home immediately. My boat overturned, the others are safe, but I must get home. The couple agreed to take her home, and she gave them an address not too far away. As they drove off, the driver turned back to ask for some directions, but the back seat was empty and soaking wet. When they arrived mm -hmm. at the address the woman in white gave them, a man answered the door, and when he was told what happened, he replied, You are the third couple who's come to me with this story. Three weeks ago, while sailing on White Rock Lake, my daughter drowned. Many, many sightings have been reported since. Number nine the Moody Mansion, Galveston. Before I get to the next entry, make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos so that I can keep bringing you the most amazing content. Before it was known Goat as Man the Moody Mansion, real. it was the Willis Mansion. I mean, mansion, you know, you never Willis know, this is an urban 1895. legend. This 31 I don't disagree, room mansion but boasts I also a Romanesque don't, architecture you know, I also with ornate do agree features that he like might stained glass windows but, and hand-carved woodwork. You know, she commissioned the house to be built against her late husband's wishes after he'd passed, spending the family inheritance in the process something her 10 children did not appreciate. Unfortunately, she didn't get to live there long since she passed away in 1899, and it was then purchased by the Moody's. In 1900, a hurricane destroyed much of Galveston and took the lives of some 6,000 people, but strangely, the mansion stayed standing, 
untouched. Perhaps it was the ghost of Narcissa keeping her prized possession safe? Visitors to the house constantly report faces and spectral images showing up in photographs taken in the house, prompting paranormal investigators to come here to do research. Number 8. San Fernando Cathedral, San Antonio The oldest church in the entire state of Texas has stood tall for nearly 300 too. years, and in that time it's collected many, many spirits, some of whom were buried within the walls of the church themselves. Well, when searching Ryan for paranormal Shane activity here, are, one of the first things researchers often see I wouldn't consider them to be the best trotting in front of the cathedral, only to but disappear that's soon after. It's said that the horse was um, a gift from an Apache I've known tribe people that, that have had experiences on the Goatman Bridge. Other ghosts that walk the but grounds that, you know, include that, that again, man dressed in black that's clothes from a scenario the 18th century that we have to deal who with. follows tours and then suddenly you know, disappears, as well as those of monks can who can be seen and heard standing at the back of the pews during services. Number seven, Demon's Road, Huntsville. Formerly known as Bowden Road, this seldom traveled dirt road is creepy enough without the ghost stories. It's overgrown, has misshapen trees, and in the dark seems like something right out of a horror movie. But there is at least one notable spirit who haunts travelers who dare come through here. A boy on a tricycle with glowing eyes has been reported by many people riding down the road. He appears in the middle of the road and stares you down until you approach him. And once you do, a thick fog rises from the ground and he disappears. There's one more story about Demon's Road that I found super interesting though. Two friends heard that the road was haunted and decided to check it out for themselves, and as they drove down it in the middle of the night, the trees seemed to shift and shake, and then they arrived at their destination at the end of Demon's Road, which just so happens to be the next entry on our list. Number 6, Martha Chapel Cemetery. When the two men drove up to the cemetery, which was named after the first person who was buried there, Martha Palmer, moonlight was piercing through the clouds and lighting the headstones and epitaphs before them. They both got out to crack a few brews and explore the cemetery, but when the driver decided to pour some on one of the graves, a skeletal hand burst from the ground, <laughs> grabbing at his ankle and dragging him into the dirt. His friend and passenger ran over to help, kicking at the That's zombie-like funny. arm and dragging him away. <laughs> After he was freed, the driver called out for them to escape, and when he got back to his car, he looked back, but didn't see his friend, who supposedly just saved his life. He was actually still sitting in the passenger seat, asleep. And as he peeled out and drove huh. back down Demon's Road, his passenger slumped over into his lap, and the driver realized that his friend had died. Allegedly, he passed away from a heart Whoa. attack on the drive to the cemetery. And in okay. 2018, a video surfaced from someone who was exploring the Google Street View of the area and saw a ghostly image appear inside hmm. the cemetery. A creepy, pale face of a boy was behind a tree in one shot and missing in the next. There was also a large black figure in the background that did not seem to be human. Spooky stuff. Number 5. Miss Molly's Hotel, Fort Worth Originally built in 1910 as the Palace Rooms, Fort Worth's first bed and breakfast, Miss Molly's, has had quite the history. During Prohibition, it became a speakeasy called the Oasis. In the 1940s, it became a brothel known as the Guyette Hotel, and after that was shut down, it became Miss Molly's. There have been many, many reports of unwanted guests appearing here, most notably those of Jake the Cowboy and Josie King, the former madam of the brothel, both of whom are seen as full body apparitions. Workers and visitors alike have witnessed them walking through locked doors, books being thrown, items disappearing and reappearing in random places, and strangely, change being neatly organized in certain rooms. In room three, indents on the edge of the bed have appeared as though someone were suddenly sitting on it and shaking the bed while guests sleep. You know, I think little Richard said it best. Good golly, Miss Molly. Number four, The Grove, Jefferson. This house, built in 1861, has had many, many owners over the years, and most would agree that the place is cursed. Since its construction, mm. most of the owners of the house have experienced some sort of tragedy. The original owner lost his cotton factory due to a freak flood, and a lynch mob committed horrible atrocities on the properties, where four freed slaves were brutalized and hung from trees on the property. The spirits of these men are said to be the most active spirits on the property. Later owners saw multiple family members take their own lives on the property, and some developed rare diseases. The spirits here are quite restless, and there are reports abound of books flying off shelves, mirrors shattering, voices telling people to do horrible things to themselves, and full-on ghostly apparitions that appear and disappear at will. All of these things show that the Grove definitely belongs on this list. Number three, the Black Swan Inn, San Antonio. There is no relation to the 2010 film I've here, been to the but Black the strange Swan happenings have messed up times. people 
people's minds just as much as yep. Natalie Portman's characters was. The land that the inn now stands on has major ties to indigenous peoples mm -hmm. from some 7,000 years ago, and is also a former battle site for the war between the Texan and Mexican army in 1842. But 35 years later, a dairy farm was founded on the land by a German immigrant. The blood-soaked soil here seems to be a bad place to build, as tragedy struck many who lived on the land. The farmer's wife passed away from cancer she developed shortly after moving in, and two years later, he decided to join her by taking his own life. Soon after, the property was purchased by two families and renamed the White Gables. However, at the age of 38, one of the new owners, Jolene Street, also passed away due to cancer. And like the owners before them, her husband hung himself in the bedroom. The inn that now stands has had reports of the spirits of the former owners wandering the halls with their necks broken, pushing guests off of their beds, and generally getting up to no good. No matter which way you slice it, this property seems cursed. Number two, the Hill House, Mineral Springs. In part two, I talked about the haunted Baker Hotel in Mineral Springs, but it seems that the apple it's doesn't fall wells. too far from the tree, because just behind the Baker Hotel lies one of the most haunted places in Texas, the Hill House. Many people stay in this house, attempting to witness paranormal activity, and most of them get more than they bargained for and don't make it through the night without leaving terrified. The owners of the house, who purchased it in 2017 knowing its haunted history, rent it out to individuals and paranormal research teams looking to witness something terrifying. And apparently about 50% of them, including the professionals, leave within the first night. This is due to a spirit or entity that resides here named Toby, who growls loudly in your ear to get out, knocks things over, slams doors, and even gets violent. Videos show all sorts of terrible things happening to people who stay here like a woman who was taunting the spirits, trying to make something happen, being viciously pulled off of her bed, leaving her bruised. And when she returned a year later, for some reason, she was scratched by something invisible in the room so badly that blood leaked through her shirt. Whoever Toby is, it seems like he doesn't want anyone else to come yeah. into his house and will do anything to keep them out. Number one. Old Town Spring. While the rest of the entries on this list and my other two videos have had some terrifying places, our number one spot belongs to an entire town that is haunted, and some even Spring, say Texas. cursed. Allegedly, in the 1700s, a curse was cast by members of the Akokisa tribe on the town and its people who stole their land and killed their kin. And this curse has followed the town all the way through history, continuing even today. One Every building in this small town. town has a haunting story, and I'll share a few of them with you now, it. but I encourage you to look this up because there are so many more that I just can't get to today. Hmm. The Whitehall House was built in 1895 and has since been converted into a funeral home, and they have a special special room upstairs designated as the ghost room, where the spirits of the dead who haunt the building can reside. Figures are seen walking through the door, dancing on the balcony, and heard inside. One of the previous owners decided to renovate the room and experienced, quote, violent spirit activity. And it took years for the ghosts to calm back down. There are now two new clauses in the lease agreement for the building. The ghost room is not to be disturbed, and you can't break the lease due to a haunting. Many of the buildings <laughs> in town can be seen with trees growing close closely and even through some of the buildings, and allegedly the curse placed upon the town ensured that if anyone cut down any trees, they would experience a terrible fire. And this has happened inexplicably many times to many different buildings in the town, and some quite recent. There is also a hanging tree where a judge sentenced more than 60 people to death, which is an insane rate, even by the standards of any time. And the old ice house, which was used to store corpses waiting to be sent to the funeral home has a heavy energy, and everything goes quiet when you get near it. And it's burned down countless times. You know, with all of these creepy things going on throughout the years, it is no wonder people think Old Town Spring is cursed, and a no-brainer that it ended up number one on this list. And it might even be above the number ones in part one and two. Let me know mm. what you think in the comments below. That was fun. Okay. Wow, um, let's see here. Wow, that was a, some really interesting videos there. Um, so yeah, like I was saying during some of them, I have some evidence from some of these 
that I could provide or present and see what you guys think of it, but I need to go find it. Um, I've gone on numerous paranormal investigations throughout the region that I live in, and that, that region uh, does include San Antonio. Uh, friends, of, friends of mine and I uh, have gone to the ghost tracks a couple times. Um, I have an EVP from there. Uh, one of my friends has uh, a picture uh, of one of those hands on the side of the car because we've we put like salt or not salt uh, baking soda uh, on our like windows and and on the sides of the car and stuff like that and there are little handprints that are shown there that weren't there before we got in there so the story about that is that they'll that that if you put your car in neutral at a certain point uh, at the tracks um, that your car will get pushed across by there and it's happened I've done it. Um, and we had pictures there. The next day we came back, and uh, he had that's where he got those pictures. The next day we came back, and I was walking along the trail, uh, the, the the track, um, you know, doing an EVP session. There was no cars. There was nothing there. Um, and you know, I was just sitting there talking, and I got a giggle uh, come through, like a little little boy or little girl's giggle come through on there like I was I was kind of uh just trying to get their attention just saying hey you know I'm sorry that you guys that that happened to you we we thanked them for that and they kind of giggled it and I and I kind of thought that it was a playful giggle not like something menacing or anything like that um but then at the Alamo uh we went a friend of mine and I went last year um and we did one of the big like tours that one of the ghost tours that they did um, and we were actually staying close to it. And uh, after our tour, we went back to the Alamo. And it was like, you know, the middle of the night. And we were standing there and, and asking questions out kind of along where the there's a, there's a brick road that's right there between the Alamo and a shopping center. And while we were talking, um, there was nobody else around us really. But like a, a man whispering or saying something in Spanish, we're trying to figure it out what it was, uh, can be heard. I thought it sounded like you might be praying, which for those of you that don't know, that little portion of the Alamo that's there is actually the chapel from the original Alamo. And it wasn't in its original look. It's not in its original location either. Um, but that whole area of San Antonio is the battleground of the Alamo. So... There's all sorts of stuff there. There's all sorts of hauntings there. Uh, one of the more haunted... I'm surprised they didn't mention it. One of the more haunted hotels in uh, Texas is right there called the Manger. Uh And it is... I've had some outrageous encounters there. Even by my standards, outrageous. Uh, with with uh, evidence. So, yeah. This was a good, this was a good little stream. Um... Some of those things I had never heard of. The donkey lady wasn't really ever familiar with. The goat man I had heard stories of. Um, and I've heard from other investigators that have had bizarre experiences on that bridge. You know, I know that Magna Pena here had mentioned that the goat man isn't real. Because one group of investigators went and did it and they got nothing. That's not the way paranormal investigation works. I don't care what anybody says. One, like, one time or one investigation is rarely enough to get anything. Um, you know, that's just not the way that paranormal investigation works. Uh, you need to do it several times. And even then, it may not even be you that will get attention or you that will attract attention. It's just one of those things. That's the way these things operate. Um... You know, that's just the way that it is, and that's why that why these things are legends. You know, they're they're not an everyday thing. That's why they are also urban legends, is because we got mixed up stories there. You know, in in that one, especially whenever it came to the uh, the screaming bridge, there was some vastly different stories that were told uh, about how and why that that was it wasn't like 
it wasn't the the um, the story itself that was wrong. Like people still died at those locations, but it was the nature in which they were there. So you know, it's kind of semantical whenever it comes down to it. Um, but yeah, those that, that was some fascinating stuff. If you guys have any other recommendations, put them in the comments. Um, I will start a Discord channel, or I have started a Discord channel for such things. I will uh, I will link that in the video once it is once this video has gone live. I'll go in and, and link it so you guys can put in some stuff in the Discord. And um, thanks for watching. This was a lot of fun. I'll do this a couple times throughout like the weeks. I'm probably gonna do one on Tuesday with with Ryan and anybody else that wants to join in. Um, and then on Fridays, I think I'll do my own just by myself. So yeah, just so everybody knows, that's what's going on. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next stream or video. This is Colin the Conqueror signing off.